Okay, hey everybody, Marky here from uh, John1911 and Tactical T-Shirts. More John1911, as you guys will notice. Um, quick Facebook Live. Uh, posted some pictures on our blog page earlier today, and uh, wanted to just do a quick in and out. Uh, I actually have some VIP people coming over here in the next like 15 minutes, so I gotta I gotta bang this thing out and be done quick. So. While I was traveling up outside of D.C. a week or two ago, I uh, usually hit a bunch of um, the old-time gun stores on the East Coast, and I had run into a rifle that I had been on my long-term to-buy list for a while. It's a Ross rifle. It's a um, straight pull, if anyone is uh, curious. It's a, um, let's see here, you know, it's a straight pull action uh, made by the Canadians. Um was that a very successful design, uh, but pretty cool gun. Uh, there's a later version of this that's known to uh, have some issues. Uh, they quote blow up. They don't really blow up, but if you don't put them together right, they they can slam me in the face. So it's a flaw of all the straight pull guns. Um, this one is, uh, as I said, Canadian, obviously, but then it had been shipped to the U.S., um, uh, and uh, it's got it's got uh, American proof marks on it. Cool gun. Um, it had some issues. It's got some cracks. It's got a crack up here in the uh, I guess in this uh, quick load lever area. There's a crack here. This is a it's a it's a lever for the follower. Let's see if I can get this in the light. And you push it, and it's supposedly you can load it quick. I don't really think it's that. That effective, but then it's got a uh, other crack, very slight crack on the left side. You probably can't even see it on the camera, but uh, and the butt plate was a little loose. Um, this was in a um, you know a little hole in a wall gun shop. They, they knew what they had, but they didn't have a market for it, and saw me coming, and I was like, yeah, I'll go ahead and pick that up. So. Uh, it's a project for Freeze. Um, Freeze is our resident gun fixer around here and, you know, going to go through and, and do all that. So I'm showing you that to show you what we had a bunch of guys um, saw pictures today. I uh, needed a bayonet for this gun in the armory because it's got to be at least complete. This is a U.S. marked uh, Canadian Ross bayonet. Um, kind of interesting how the um, the guards got a little turn up on it. Um, I don't think this has been cut. Freeze was thinking that maybe this might have been cut and ground down, but he hasn't seen it in person. And um, I'm not, you know, I'm not. I, I don't. I don't know if you if anyone's a, a Ross person and they they recognize you know what this bayonet is and and all that. Um, you know, drop me a line and uh, you know let me know. I don't think the uh, the scabbard has has any U.S. markings on it, but um, you know it, it is what it is. I needed it. We need it for the gun. So here's the problem. All right, if I can show this. So I went to go put the uh, the bayonet on the rifle, and I'm having some issues uh, getting it to uh, getting it to drop down, and it's you know it's little bit tight and it's not really budging and I'm I'm thinking it's the um, where the bayonet attachment is I'm thinking it's you know it's going to be it's going you know maybe it's something here maybe this is maybe uh you know the uh, the maybe it's fouled up down in here uh, so you know this obviously it's not it's not frozen uh, it's tapered it looks like it clicks on you don't have to depress it to get it on and then as I'm looking at it let's see if I can point this at me, I realize what the issue is. Let's see if I can put it in front of my my chin here. Do you see the problem now with this bayonet? Don't know what you call that part on a bayonet because I'm not a big knife guy, so, but it's bent. So um, maybe through the years it had been dropped or stepped on or or, or, or whatnot, so uh, it's a little, it's a little out of spec. So it uh, doesn't want to 
fit on the um, on the receiver, the bayonet receiver over the um, or fit over the barrel, and then so it won't lock into the bayonet lug on the rifle. So uh, Freeze is sleeping right now. He doesn't know any of this is happening. So he now has another project um, uh, to to fix. I imagine that we're going to have to, <laughs> I mean, hammer that out. Uh, these are pretty expensive. These go on, these bayonets are pretty hard to come by, and they typically are around $200. Uh, we didn't pay anywhere near that. We got a deal on it, some of it that we know. But um, I don't know if, how, how, I mean, I'm going to leave that to the experts on how they're going to fix that problem um, without cracking it or, or whatever. And I can just see, you know, we end up cracking it or shattering it, trying to straighten it out. Let me see if I can do this again. Straighten it out. And then we end up having to farm it out to a machine shop to have it welded up and then ground down just so it fits. So, you know, look. Uh, a lot of people like the mill serp stuff. It's really cool, you know, uh, it, cool stuff on the internet, cool content. And, uh, you know, we run it as a reference for the reference library over here in the armory, but it's, um, you know, I'm more of a modern guy, but it's not all, you know, uh, fun and games and, and easy work. Sometimes you have, you have issues and uh, you got to self-rescue because this bayonet is, I think, 110 years old. So um, we're screwed. So if we break it, we're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, I mean, it's gonna, never gonna be original. But damn it, it will get on the rifle. So anyway, I thought you'd give you guys an update. Um, oh, one more thing. To prove that I am not a bayonet guy or a knife guy, and how, but I'm a gun guy. But knife guys are just a little bit different than all of us. Check out the size of the box that the bayonet was shipped in. That thing, we couldn't believe how big that was when it showed up down at the mail center. We thought it was the wrong package. So, obviously, you know, knife guys are just, they're, you know, they're a different breed. So, um, if you are a knife guy and you have any advice on how to, um, how to fix this, uh, not break it, or at least that I can tell Freeze how to fix it, not break it, uh, let me know. If you're a knife guy and somehow you're realizing this knife does not belong on a Mark II uh, Ross rifle, uh, please drop me a note there, and there are the VIPs showing up. So anyway, if you like... All right, and uh, if you like this content... If you like this content... Uh, please go to our blog page, john1911.com. It's j-o-h-n-1911.com. Just remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. And uh, everybody have a good day.